My name is Sabine Schorl. My journey in PropTech started in 2015 when I founded the largest network of PropTech startups and scale-ups in Europe. For questions or to get in touch, you can email me or find me on LinkedIn. The most important thing that you need to understand about any technology that it is not about the technology. It's about the people. Always take the human-centric approach and aim to solve real-world problems. Technology is the enabler to make our lives better. Everything is getting smarter every day. We expect things to become smarter and respond to our needs, so why do we leave our buildings behind? The built environment is being transformed by IoT with smart technologies leading to improved productivity better space utilization with efficient and healthier buildings around the developed world. I will tell you more about the why, the how and what in smart buildings from my own experiences. There are many good reasons why you want your buildings to be smart. Smart buildings connect humans. They provide better control of facilities and operations. They support ways to collaborate digitally and they enable owners to conserve resources that include space, energy, water and employees. But there are more important reasons to make your building smart. You can measure the sustainability of your building. As you probably know, buildings account for lots of energy consumption, landfill waste and carbon dioxide emissions. With a smart building, you can reduce operating costs and maintenance costs by up to 30%. Smart buildings are clearly the way to a prosperous future. A healthy work environment is important because it su supports a sense of well-being and it encourages productivity. You spend 90% of your time indoors, with much of the time being at work, and it lowers absentee-related costs. Energy-efficient buildings are valuated higher. They achieve much higher rental income and higher occupancy rates. With smart buildings, you can win the war for talent. A study commissioned by Dell and Intel reports that 80% of millennials claim that workplace technology would influence them when deciding to take a new job. Smart buildings improve efficiency. The prestige of the location is no longer the only priority. Thanks to rapidly growing urban population and increased environmental regulation, operational efficiency is now top of the agenda. So now you know you have many reasons to make your building smart. But what is PropTech then? What choices do you have? Smart sensors can transform lifeless buildings into a smart building. This is an example of a smart room. All sensors are IoT enabled and connected with the building management system and HVAC system in your building. It has an occupancy sensor that adjusts temperature and turns off light when the room is not in use. Window contacts, setback HVAC when windows or balcony doors are left opened. Wall switches to control lighting and shading. A room temperature sensor for minimal energy consumption and maximum comfort. With the plug-in receiver, you can control and monitor all kinds of appliances. This is a great overview of all kinds of IoT-enabled technology in a smart building. What you see here are several routes with a lot of options. For example, in user experience, security, energy, lighting and signage, and facilities. Taking a closer look at the topic of energy, you can choose to measure emissions, air quality, energy performance of your building, HVAC, and lighting control, for example. The good thing is that you can measure and improve in these areas by combining the data you will get from different sensors and make connections to your HVAC, lighting and building management system. When you have decided to make your building smart, you can use a framework to start. The framework that I use is based on design thinking approach. It has five steps in which you go from discovery to implementation. The first step is discovery. This is your as-is situation. The second step is your dream situation, your to-be. The third step is diagnose of what is missing. The fourth step is to design the path to your dream state. The fifth step is drive. 
to implement the technology. In the discovery phase, you map all kinds of challenges. What problems are really worth to be solved? You define your issue statements. And what data is already available in your building? And who are your stakeholders? So what is your dream situation? Start with thinking of your definition of success. What are the desired results, tools and metrics of success? Define your real estate vision and define the PropTech, PropTech program. This is important for commitment, allocation of resources and alignment with the business. Some examples for metrics of success are Reduce total energy costs with 20% in a certain period of time, for example, this year. Or increase revenue of flexible co-working spaces with 10% this year. When you know what problems to solve, you can scout the right PropTech solutions. Find out what the restraints and possibilities are of the building, infrastructure and the building management system. Another important topic is, what data do you need? Why do you need this data? And who will going to use this data? What is the gap between your future-proof building and your current situation? Looking at the data, we can find different purposes. For example, how can we inform the stakeholders in the company? Or how can we analyze to optimize the dimensions of meeting spaces? We can communicate the data with your guests about quiet spaces, for example. In the use case of energy monitoring and occupancy analytics, you can use the sensor data in different ways. The sensors start to collect data and via dashboards you can see what is measured. With this data, you can see what issues occur or needs attention. With AI and machine learning, you can analyze the data and you'll get reports on your building performance. You can correlate different data sets like energy performance and indoor conditions with asset usage. It is important that this data is not siloed, but combined in one platform. You can engage employees, students or other guests through data. You can get them the most out of their stay for a healthy, safe and enjoyable stay in the building. You can bring actionable signage on building, floor and room level through narrowcasting. And while getting more data, your building and insights are getting smarter in continuous cycles. Your building can and will produce a lot of data. And the algorithms can identify patterns. With the growing amount of data and learning algorithms, your building is getting smarter. A smart building can even be able to predict the future. Another step further is a digital twin of your building. Through digital twins, concepts can be visualized, tested and shared digitally and at a fraction of the cost of a real-world implementation, pilot or prototype. This way, new ideas can be developed, discussed and expanded by stakeholders before moving through the execution phase. At this point in the cycle, constraints can be added, feasibility can be digitally assessed and computer simulations can provide a playbook of viable options to be evaluated. With all those options and preferences, you start to define the functional and technical requirements. Involve your IT department and asset managers for a holistic view. You start to design the architecture principles and data strategy, and then you choose your vendors and partners. With this information and the foundation of your plans, you can create the business case. What is the ROI, the return on innovation, your return on investment. What new services, savings or revenue can you create? And in the last phase, you can start to implement. Start small with a pilot and deploy the solutions. An important step is to monitor and evaluate to be able to constantly improve. Are the results as you expected? After a successful pilot, you can develop a change and adoption program in case more people need to be part of the success. With the results, you can enhance the benefits and user journeys. Because, as you already know, not only technology, but also the building is about the people that are using it, renting it or maintaining it.